Hey everyone, it's Captain Hitbo here, and in today's video, I'm going to share my top five tips and tricks when it comes to ship combat in the Sea of Thieves. So pull up your ship, come aboard, and let's have our pirate conversation. It's important to know where everything is located on your ship. The location of the barrels, the armory, and the equipment are all in different places on each ship type. And if you want to be a successful pirate, it is important to know where everything is on your ship and on the ships you board during combat. This bit of knowledge can mean the difference between your ship sinking, you being sent to the ferryman, or you running out of ammo and not being able to defend yourself. Take some time to learn each ship type so that you can be an effective part of your crew. Now let's talk about the ship types and their strengths and weaknesses. Galleons are going to be your fortresses on the seas. They are also the fastest ship with the wind, but when you are against the wind it is the slowest of all the ship types. The galleon has two levels which have its advantages and its disadvantages. The advantage here is that for an enemy ship to sink you, they have to hit your ship below the waterline. This can be a difficult shot for most crews. However, at the same time, most crews do not keep their top level repaired, and a simple ballast ball from an enemy ship can bring down your galley fast. Another thing to consider is the galley takes the longest to turn and make maneuvers, which means you have to plan out your navigation a little bit in advance. Brigs are a bit different than galleys and sloops. Their strongest point is the fact that they move so fast and are able to make tighter turns than the galleons. This gives them a bit of an edge. However, this also puts them at a risk as they are easier to sink when you consider they do not have multiple levels. With that in mind, you want to make sure that you are Johnny on the spot when it comes to repairs down below. Now in terms of speed, they are a bit slower than galleons with the wind, but having only two sails where they might be slower, they make it up for being a bit easier to manage the sails and keep the wind on your side. Also, their turn radius is better than the galleon, allowing you to make tighter turns, giving the brig a bit of an edge in this area. Now, out of all the ship types, the sloop is the slowest with the wind, but the fastest when you sail into the wind. This ship is great for solo players and two-man crews. If the galley is your fortress on the seas and the brig is the attack ship, the sloop would have to be the utility ship. It is an all-around easy ship to sail and manage on your own while at the same time being difficult to sink. Though it is the slowest with the wind, where it makes it up is in the maneuverability. It has the best turn radius of all the ships and is extremely easy to make those tight turns that most other ships will have a difficult time doing. It's also the fastest when you sail into the wind, which means if you're being chased by a bigger ship, just turn your sloop into the wind and you will slowly gain some distance from them. Now let's talk about crew roles. These are the roles that I've created that I assigned to my crew and they've helped us be successful on the seas. The Helmsman. The Helmsman is in charge of steering and maneuvering the ship. During combat, he never leaves the ship and calls out whatever needs to be done. Examples would be raising or lowering the sails, anchor drops, etc. In some cases, the helmsman may come down and help on the cannons, raise and lower the sails himself, and other various things on the ship. Overall, his role is to keep the ship safe and away from harm's way. Next we have is the bilge rat. Now, the bilge rat isn't the most glorious part of the ship, but it is one of the most important roles. The bilge rat is in charge of all repairs, stays on the ship at all times during combat, and their first priority is bailing and fixing all the holes on the ship. If they need help, it is their responsibility to call out to the crew to help them with whatever they need. They also help with other responsibilities on the ship, such as raising or lowering the sails, dropping anchor, etc. In my experience, this is one of the most important roles. A good bilge rat also knows when to fix a hole and when to simply bail to stay afloat. Now let's talk about the boarders. This crew member is typically the one who is eager for a fight. They are the first person to leave the ship to board another, and their priority is to get aboard, drop the anchor, kill pirates, but above all else, stay alive and cause a distraction. 
This allows for the second border to board and your ship to get the critical hits below the deck with the cannons. If the first border does his job properly, the enemy ship will stand no chance. Second border. This is the second person to leave the ship to board another ship during combat. If the first border misses his board, this role's new goal becomes dropping the anchor, killing the pirates and staying alive and causing a distraction. A second boarder also stays behind on the ship and mans the cannons for the first initial encounter on the seas. After a few solid hits, the boarder will then attempt to board and help the first boarder out. A crew working together in their roles is a force to be reckoned with. Every crew member has a part to play to alert your crew of dangers on the seas and communication is the key. If you are not talking to each other about what is happening, then you quite possibly have already lost. Outthink your foe. That's all I can say. Outthink your foe. You don't always have to be the better shot or more skilled player. The best tools you have is the ability to read the situation at hand and make a good judgment call on what to do. Keep your enemy guessing and stay alert to the plans they may have for you. In a lot of my adventures, I often mix things up to keep the enemy pirates guessing. Most pirates expect certain things when fighting other ships. If you can surprise them with a strategy that is a bit different than normal, it really throws them off and you have a better chance of catching your enemies by surprise. And last but certainly not least, watch for borders. There's nothing more dangerous than an enemy pirate boarding your ship. It is good practice to keep an ever watchful eye on your ladders and an ear for those mermaid spawns trying to warn you that an enemy pirate is close. If you know that your whole crew is on ship and you hear someone swimming, call out to your crew so that they are made aware of the potential border and make sure to go cover the ladders as quickly as you can. There are so many different types of cursed cannonballs and they all have a part to play. In a tough situation, they could mean the difference between your crew coming on top or being sent to the Ferry of the Damned. Some of my personal favorites to always keep on hand is anchor balls and ballast balls. I've seen these come in handy more times than I can count and have saved me and my crew from not only PvP encounters but also those scaly ship encounters. Practice your cannon shots and know where to hit. Oftentimes, I run into crews who couldn't hit the broadside of a mountain with their cannons. It is important that every crew member practices shooting cannons and gets used to how they work. It is also very important to read the situation and know where to shoot your cannon. There are times where everyone should aim below the sea level to help sink the enemy ship faster, but there are also times where you should tell your crew to all aim on the top deck in hopes of hitting other pirates and sending them to the ferryman. Remember, a ship who has one or two crew members less because you're able to hit them with your cannons makes all the difference for you and your boarders to do what they need to do. If there is no risk, there is no reward. Sometimes you have to be a bit risky to come out on top. So let's talk about gunpowder kegs, mega kegs, and the ever favorite ramming technique. Gunpowders can be your best friend, but worst enemy all at the same time. These little barrels of fun can mean the difference between your crew having a great time laughing at the misfortune of your enemies, or you crying salty tears as your crew is on the ferryman knowing that the enemy pirates are climbing up to your crow's nest and about to drop a whole lot of hurt on your ship. It's always a good idea to keep an eye on your crow's nest and stay alert to see if anyone is climbing up that shouldn't be. Mega Kegs well, there's not much to say about the Mega Kegs other than keeping one on your ship is probably the riskiest thing you could do in the game. If your enemies get a miracle shot on the crow's nest, it could mean great misfortune for your crew, but at the same time, if you can use it on your enemies, it may be the funnest thing you'll ever see on the seas. Ramming can be a great technique to bring down enemy pirates. If done at the right time and your crew is ready, it can provide an easy way for your boarders to get on and drop the anchor. However, it also opens up your ship to get boarded. In any ram situation, make sure your crew is aware of what is happening so everyone can stand by and prepare for a fight.
The last bit of advice I have for you is to get comfortable with your crew in ship to ship combat by engaging in it as much as possible. The only real way you can get better at anything is to practice, practice, and practice some more. Your crew will get to a point where you don't have to tell anyone what to do, they will just know what must be done. When your crew is working together on that level, you will be a powerful force in the Sea of Thieves and pirates will be terrified when they see your ship colors.